nervousness on the phone there. Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You gotta make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Play call. Play call. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. Once again, we're going to try this whole YouTube thing. Sorry for not doing it yesterday. Just time, time sucked yesterday. Didn't get a chance to get everything done that I needed to get done. Um, if you'd like to... Be on the show. If you want, if you're on YouTube, you want to call in live sometime because eventually this is going to be live. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to accept calls from numbers that I know because I'm not going to risk this channel getting banned because some rando decides to call in and start, you know, dropping hard R's. You know what I mean? So uh, we're not playing that game. So if you are interested, and, and again, this does not just have to be Packers fans, this could be any fans of any kind. Try to be semi respectful. Please try to uh, watch the language a little bit if you're going to call in. Um, otherwise, you can pretty much call in about whatever you want. In fact, uh, people have called about literally whatever they want. So anyways, also up here, if you don't know what the heck is going on, we have a daily podcast. Go ahead and uh, take a picture of that, and it'll take you right to the podcast. And um, you can subscribe and listen on your ride into work, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, why don't we go ahead and get started? I should have had this ready to rock and roll. Let's start with Nate. Hey, Ryan, it's Nate. Um, looks like I'm finally going to start calling back in a little bit more now that we're actually getting real football. Cool not just beans. Off-season crap, but I had to call in to make a couple comments because it's already getting out of control like it does every year. One, Sean Clifford. I've mentioned this, these couple things on Twitter, but Sean Clifford, yes, he looked, he looked great. He made some great throws. He also threw two interceptions and I saw him throw just directly into the dirt, like totally missing a wide open receiver, like just for no reason at all. So why don't we just, let's just take a breath. Yeah, he looks good. He could, he's going to be a good backup, but he is a backup. So I don't want to hear anything about like Sean Clifford should, should be starting or, or anything like that. All right. And also, you know, he he was not elite. He wasn't an elite backup. He's just a backup. Two. So Sean Clifford's going to be a lot of fun to watch, and and I agree with you. I, I think we can maximize Sean Clifford's stay with us by just accepting what it is. He is a really fun to watch backup quarterback. That's it, and he's going to be. It's going to make for some great preseasons, but. We're just going to be miserable if we're going to have it have some stupid fights about whether or not. I mean, you've even got people out there saying he's going to be not mostly Packer fans, but some of them. He's going to be replaced midseason. I ret- if you're interested, I retweeted a Bears fan who's offering fifty dollars. He's not going to pay up. It doesn't matter. But go ahead and find him. Um, fifty bucks says Jordan Love is replaced by Sean Clifford midseason. There's a zero percent chance that that happens. Even if Jordan Love is terrible, Sean Clifford is not going to come in and replace him because Sean Clifford was not drafted to be a realistic starter for the Green Bay Packers. It's Jordan Love or bust. But uh, we don't need to go down that. You can love Sean Clifford. You can say this guy's so awesome, but just don't cross that line into saying nonsense because it's just going to make everybody miserable. Uh, Our kicker, okay? Yeah, I I know. He's he's not starting off great. He's a rookie. He's not going to start off great. You know, it's his first time being on an NFL field. Sometimes rookies start off great. I mean, I'm I'm let me just let me just do this just to be mean about it. And and maybe there's not going to be anything here, but um let me just see if I can find some kickers that were drafted this year. And uh yes, BT Botter, no idea who he is. He was 3 for 3 on extra points. Tanner Brown 2 for 2 on extra points. Trey Wolf 1 for 1 on extra points. Jake Bates was two for three on extra points. Jake Moody was one for one. Anders Carlson, so only two people missed an extra point. Anders Carlson missed one of them. Anders was, aside from, I think, Jake Moody, the only of these kickers to actually be drafted. So I understand the pump the brakes thing, but I also don't want to take it too far in the other direction where it's like, eh, who cares? You're allowed to suck in training camp. No, you're not allowed to suck. That's not, that's not the thing that we're trying to say. 
you are going to be the starting kicker. You need week one to start making some, I mean, extra points immediately. It's, you know, I, I, I don't know that we're going to be in a situation where there's four seconds left. We're down by two points. We need Anders Carlson to bang a 53 yarder through in order to get the win. I don't know that that's going to happen, but I know he's going to have to kick extra points in like a couple freaking weeks. <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to calm down. I mean, th- this isn't like Lucas Van Ness where we have three, four edge rushers in front of him and it's like, eh, you know, he'll get mixed in. He'll make some good plays and make some mistakes and get over it, right? Carrington Valentine, yeah, he's a backup, whatever. He's our only kicker. He's it. Like him and Jordan Love and a couple people, it's like th- th- there, there is, there's no room for making mistakes anymore. Same with Jordan. Like I'm, I, I'm somewhat impatient with Jordan. Yeah, there's no plan B, dude. You've been sitting for a long time. I get it. Not everything's going to be perfect. But, I mean, dude, the clock is ticking to start figuring out how to stop making some of those mistakes that you continue to make over and over and over and over again. It's going to happen. I, I see a lot of people talking about bringing Mason Crosby back. And, again, I mentioned this on Twitter. Are we forgetting what his nickname was? What his nickname is in Green Bay? Mason Crossbar? He has had some really bad games also. Now he's had great games and he is definitely a veteran. He's that respectable guy. He hits those easy ones. He's the guy that you like to have on the field, but at the same time, he has had really bad games. He has made a lot of misses. So let's just give Carlson a break and, you know, realize that veterans also make a lot of mistakes. So just bringing a veteran on does not automatically mean that it's going to make that big of a difference. Why don't we draft, we drafted this guy. Why don't we develop him? get him a lot of practice, and, you know, maybe a few games in, if he's still, like, halfway through the season, missing kick after kick after kick. He will be. Then we can talk about replacing him. We did not spend a draft pick on a kicker to boot him out the door. Right. Sorry, that's just stupid, and you're stupid if you think that. <laughs> Again, sorry, don't mean to be so blunt. But anyway, uh, I love the game. It went super well, obviously, and I think we're all really excited for a lot of players. Go Pecco. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 the same thing as I said with Jordan Love. It's boom or bust with Anders Carlson. But he's he's going... I mean, th- this isn't going to be fixed in a couple weeks. There's no way in the world that's not going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to be in a situation where we're mid-season and he's still making these mistakes, so then what do we do? I think we still just keep going with Anders Carlson, but the the, the question is... At what point do you cut bait, and what direction do you turn? I don't think Mason's the answer. They're trying to get away from Mason. It's the same with, again, same with Aaron Rodgers. We need to find a plan B. We can't just ride this thing. The wheels are falling off, right? I mean, Mason's, his leg just isn't what it was anymore. We need another plan. It's not like, ah, fine, we'll just have Mason for another 10 years, as though there's just this random um, uh, ungratefulness among the Green Bay Packers organization where once you've been there for like 15 years, they're just like, I'm just bored with this guy. He's so good, but he's just stupid and he stinks and I don't like him. Uh, that, that's not the case. At some point you recognize like it's time, we, we, we have to come up with a new plan because this is just not sustainable, right? We, we need a young guy to come in and replace you. That's that's the name of the game. And this is when they did it. This is when they made their big switch. And um we, he doesn't have time to grow. I mean, he just he just doesn't. He has to start making kicks immediately. Um, and again, I just don't think that that's necessarily going to be happening. And that's... What the heck am I trying to do? I'm trying to talk and do things at the same time. Uh, so yeah, I, that, that's why I've been saying, I don't know what to do here with Anders Carlson. I know we're not just going to cut... I mean, I guess I shouldn't say I know, but we're not going to cut bait before the season starts. But that also means we're going to be stuck with Carlson as he's still trying to work out the kinks and they're trying to tweak him and all this stuff. Honestly, if I had to guess of what's going to happen is this is a long-term investment in Anders Carlson. He's going to massively struggle this year. The Packers fan base is going to hate this guy with the passion of a thousand sons. He's not going to be replaced next year, although they'll probably bring in some undrafted free agents, whatever. They're not going to draft somebody. There'll be some competition. Everyone will keep their fingers crossed just begging that Anders Carlson is replaced. That's not going to happen, and he will probably be our kicker next year. Hopefully, having worked out some of these kinks and, and starting to see some of the progress of, of being worked through. And maybe that's overly pessimistic. Maybe that's not necessarily fair to Anders Carlson. I mean, we saw how quickly these special teams in general turned around. Maybe this is just kind of a minor tweak. 
in terms of, you know, how we want to get things done around here, how you're, you know, you're kicking motion or whatever it is that we're supposedly working on. I have no idea, but, um, that's, if, if you just gun to my head, am I allowed to say that on YouTube? Probably not. If you just said you have to make a prediction, how this is going to go, he's going to play. He's going to be making all these mistakes. He's going to miss extra points. He's going to miss field goals, probably more, more or less the easy ones. Although he'll make some like 56 yarders and it'll be awesome because I mean, that's just, it's not a leg thing for him. It's just kind of a consistency thing. Um, and then I, yeah, I just, I just think it's going to end on a, on a low note. And then, you know, then I'll have all off season to kind of hone these things in and we'll come back next year and say, Hey, maybe this will be a better year. That's what I think is probably going to happen. Hi, Ryan. Uh, this is uh, Koozie from Warsaw. Koozie. He called in quite a while. What's up, man? Frankly, until you start seeing guys play actual football, to me, there just wasn't a whole lot to say. I get it. Um, but now that I have, just some quick thoughts on the what we saw. We're going to have tough cuts on wide receivers. Everybody looked pretty good. And I think Watson, Dobbs, Reed, Torrey, and Wicks are locks, so... At least one or maybe two spots for some guys that look pretty good. So we'll see if we can sneak some guys onto the practice squad, I guess. The offensive line, I thought, was meh. You know, it weren't terrible, but uh, I didn't really see anything that impressed me too much. Um, one thing that was refreshing is on punt returns, um, Reed catches it so effortlessly. I yeah. don't have to sit and worry every time like with Ture. we have a punt and I have to know whether it's going to be caught or not. He just grabs it so effortlessly and smooth. Ture reminds me of Amari, right? You know he's got the ability apparently to go do something with it because he had that big that big run, but um, he just scares the crap out of you because he's such an unnatural catcher. It's just like he he just kind of buckets his, his arms, and, you know, like when you tell your little kid how to catch and you're like, okay, put your arms like this. He does a little bucket thing, and then the ball just bounces all over the place. And he, it's just it's just a heart attack every single time. And you're right, Reed. In general, even as a receiver, he looks that way. It's so smooth and effortless. Um, but yeah, that that I, I, it's just a relief to not have to deal with that. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. I'm not worried about it anymore, which is good. Um, Carrington Valentine, oof, man, he's a steal. Um, I think he's gonna, you know stay right where he is as uh, number three. I guess if Stokes come back, he'll go to number four, but he's certainly a guy that's a lock, I think, to be in the in the on the quarterback mm-hmm. um, rotation. Yes. Um you know, I think overall there's just way more positives than negatives and uh, Jordan Love looked good. You know, he missed the one wide open one to Musgrave, but hey, other than that I thought he was pretty solid. Um so I'm I'm pretty pumped. Nothing there that I saw that made me too concerned. Um, you know, another thing on the I think the last time I talked to you, I had just made a pork carnitas with a pork shoulder. There you go. And so I moved on to try beef barbacoa mm. with a big old hunk of brisket, and um, boy, that turned out pretty good. So I still think I like the carnitas better, um, but overall. It, uh, if you'd like beef instead of pork, it's a pretty good option. And, you know, I just slow cook the heck out of it and it's nice and tender and, you know, it's got a lot of fat, so it tastes good. Um, so, um, uh, I'll be listening and, uh, we'll see what happens at the next preseason game. But overall, I think it was, uh, pretty positive. Yeah. Bye. For those of you that are new here, I don't know if you can hear it, but my family's favorite game to, to play is let's, Let's take the kitchen chairs and just slide them back and forth right over dad's head just constantly. And yes, I've already got the little things that go on the bottom of them and then they fall off in two seconds. Anyways, um, yeah, first of all, yeah, definitely a great performance by the Packers in week one. And, and Matt LaFleur kind of talked about that in terms of, you know, he hadn't really seen a team play like that in terms of, I guess, the energy or whatever the case may be. So that's fantastic. I mean, they're the highest scoring team. Uh, they were the highest graded team via PFF. I believe that's still the case. There might have been one. Oh, the Raiders overtook us. Dang it. Um, so they're the second highest graded team via PFF uh, overall. Just a fantastic performance aside from the tackling, which isn't great. They were the, uh, what's the fifth lowest, sixth lowest graded tackling team. But um, no, great, great, great job. Um you know, again, I already kind of talked about Jordan a little bit, but I wouldn't say great, but fine, adequate, did what he needed to do. 
as far as the food, I got to, first of all, I got to um, get better at my lingo because I've heard all the terms, but I don't like beef barbacoa. Like, what the heck is that? It's like, oh, it's just pulled beef. Like, okay, fine. Um, but which one's which? So I actually have, I don't know if this is the right thing to use, but I have a, uh, I think it's a top round because I want to make Chicago style uh, beef sandwiches. And that's probably what I'm going to do. But as I'm looking at the pictures of the beef barbacoa, it's like, dude, you should just do that. Just do some pulled beef tacos, man, because that sounds amazing. Best tacos I've ever personally made. And I love making pulled pork tacos. I always, I've made a ton of pork butts over the years, a couple of years that I've been making them, I guess. And uh, immediately they just get turned into tacos once that first day of just devouring pork goes. But um, the my favorite that I've made was actually a brisket taco. So I do need to start looking more into beef, even just ground beef. I, I, I dig some ground beef tacos, even on the corn shells and, and doing it, you know, the more authentic way. It's still a fantastic way of doing that. So I got to check that out. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a relatively cheap cut of meat, not that there's even such a thing anymore as a cheap cut of meat. But um, I should just get another one and we'll do the we'll do the. The, the Chicago style beef sandwiches, which I can't quite get them thin thin enough, but uh, I'll I'll do my best with the au jus and everything. And then the next one, I'm going to do some beef barbacoa, and that'll be delicious. And I appreciate the recommendation, Garrett. What's going on? Interceptions are red. Pass breakups are blue. Valentine shut down the Bengals wide receivers. I think we need to trade Magoo. Dang, that was beautiful. That. That was beautiful. It really was. Hey, Ryan. It's Aaron from Eau Claire. Going on? I uh, just enjoyed watching the preseason game last night. Um, I know you said that uh, you didn't necessarily see what you wanted to see from Jordan Love in terms of consistency and all that stuff. Um, I personally saw kind of what I wanted to see, which was to kind of see him um, – make good decisions and not uh, not just sing the ball into harm's way. Um, so I thought he – yeah, he had a couple of air throws, but I thought also, like, you know, just to, grab, to take a punch rather than get an interception by trying to force it. Um, I kind of I wanted to see that, and I, so I was glad that it played out the way it did at least uh, from that perspective. Uh, and uh, also just the patience, you know, it seemed like he was playing slow, not in a bad way, but like he seemed like his body was it was uh, in a nice flow of rhythm. Um, he wasn't uh, he wasn't too jumpy, and uh, I, I appreciated that. Uh, I almost wonder if. You know, uh, if they're trying to get him to think more on those terms and work on that specifically, uh, knowing that, you know, if he can get that down, then it's just a matter of time before he gets comfortable with the timing and all of his receivers and everything. So um, the other thing that... Uh, well, before we... I don't know if you're still talking about love, but I want to jump in before I forget everything that you said so far. Um, I, I, I mean, he's never really been, I mean, maybe in college, there was uh, interception con concerns and whatnot, but he's been extremely cautious with the football. I think he just threw his fourth interception today, which is relatively low. I just saw somebody was, I don't know if Andy Herman retweeted it or what, but like Tua had thrown three interceptions in one day. And at the time it was like, Jordan's thrown three the entire camp. So um, he's been very cautious with the football. So I understand that that's still a concern maybe for some people that feel like that's a big thing for him. So to not be reckless, but the bottom line is if you're going to be wildly inaccurate, which has been the issue, I mean, you're, you're still in a sense, putting the ball in harm's way. Inaccurate balls are going to cause interceptions, right? The, the tipped balls, the, uh, the overthrows. I mean, these are things that end up in receivers arms at times. So even though there didn't happen to be a defender where there was somebody standing before, um, if there was a, a defender over there and he airmails it, that's going to end up getting picked. So, um, I mean, if that's kind of the big concern for you is interceptions and you're happy to see that he hasn't put the ball in harm's way, then then that's good. Everybody has their own thing that you're looking for with Jordan. But 
that hasn't been for me. And then, you know, again, even today, it's it's the exact same thing. He's, I mean, the whole day seemed terrible for the offense, but um, I mean, just right out of the gate, like the first pass, air mails it to a wide open. I think it was Jaden Reed. Like, you know, it's the same with the kicker. Like, come on, man. We don't have time. We don't have time. Look, if if, if it's just he's going to airmail the first pass and then he's fine for the next, you know, 95% of the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, I, I guess that's fine. But I think what, what's been bothering me about the Packers is as great as everything is gone, the biggest things are the littlest things, right? Jordan has been great, except when he has a wide open guy right in front of his face. Then he just seems to just launch it into space, right? The, the center has been doing phenomenally, except for the part where he just has to hand the freaking ball to the guy behind him. Just put it in his hands. They can't do it. The kicker, they, he, he can nail it from 65 if he wants to, but he can't hit extra points. <laughs> like, come on, guys. I don't know. Maybe you should be encouraged by that. Like, I mean, it, it is still an efficient offense. It still looks really, everything looks good. It's just, it's just annoying that it's such simple crap. Like, is this season going to get derailed because we're going to miss wide open guys and, and fumble snap exchanges and miss extra points? You know how much that's going to suck? A lot. <laughs> it's going to suck a lot. You know, it was one thing when we couldn't win games with Aaron Rodgers and it just like, the defense was just suffocating, right? Pressure constantly, and nobody's open, and Rodgers is trying to make magic happen. It's going to be an entirely different thing if we're constantly beating ourselves because Matt LaFleur has got these guys wide open and we just can't throw to them or the, the ball's getting, you know, it, it, the, the offensive line is doing a great job blocking, but the ball ends up on the ground and it turns into a sack. You know, I, I mean, this this is going to be, you know, don't overreact as training camp. I get it, but it's every single day in training camp, every single one. And so I said on day one, what I want from Jordan Love is just consistency. That doesn't have to mean perfect, but at, at this point, it's like, just just do the easy stuff. You know what I mean? And um, I guess I'm still kind of waiting for that. And I'm not saying that the, the first preseason game was bad because it wasn't. But man, that is a major gut punch when you got guys running wide open. And again, it's it's also frustrating for people that have been defending Jordan Love to the freaking death. And then he, you know, something like that happens. It's like, well, what am I supposed to say? What am I going to do? I mean, I could do what everybody else does on social media and just make excuses. I could do what Bears fans do and come up with some reason why it was a great play because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but I I I, I, I can't do that. He's standing right there. Just throw it to him, and it's a great play, and we all get to brag about you. But if you don't, then we can't, and I guess you're kind of on your own there, bud. Uh, I was going to say is it's kind of exciting to have all these young wide receivers with a lot of talent because it kind of reminds me of, like, uh, the early 2010s with Aaron winning the Super Bowl and then having – you know, this really stacked group of receivers, Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, James Jones, Randall Cobb, and uh, Jordy Nelson. Um, it's just really, really exciting to feel kind of like we're entering another window where that could be possible. So, you know, thinking about Christian Watson, Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs, Samori Toure, um, Luke Musgrave, and all the rest, I just think – we have uh, the, the, to kind of have another one of those types of wide receiving cores. And that was a nightmare for defenses to try to. I'm very excited about the guys that we have. And um, again, I know it's early, but on the positive side of things, I, I have always said I get so annoyed because it feels like every Packers game that I watch, somehow guys are wide open. Maybe it's the because our defense sucks, but it's like they, they scheme guys open all the time, and we were never seemingly able to do that. I've never seen guys so wide open all the time than I have this year. Everybody's just open all the time. It's unbelievable. I don't think Musgrave has been covered all year. And Christian Watson just beats people down the field all the time. 
And if that's not there, then the, the, the there's guys just sitting in the flat. I mean, aside from a couple miscues, bad throws, drop passes, et cetera, I mean, this offense is is really one of the more impressive I've seen just as a unit. Not like, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae are the best duo in football. That's its own thing. I'm just talking about a unit that just seems freaking unstoppable. And again, it's why I want that just that just get those couple little things figured out because it just it feels like such a great the the offensive pass blocking is incredible. Run blocking is a you know, whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. We got running backs that can make stuff happen, even if it's not the greatest. If we can just get Jordan to be the game manager, I, I saw I didn't watch the video yet, but um Colin Coward apparently called him a game manager. That's not an insult to me. I know I wasn't wowed. He's, I mean, and honestly, that's a massive promotion over what uh, Colin Coward has been saying. He went from the biggest piece of crap in the history of the world to a game manager. So, I mean, he's moving up the ranks. One more preseason game, he could be a Hall of Famer with Colin Coward. Who knows? But um, if if what we're seeing is real, with the offensive line giving up zero pressures on Jordan Love and guys getting wide open on every single play and running backs just hitting home runs left and right, you know, I don't know that we need too much more than a game manager. And again, I know he can do the special stuff. So if we could just clean up the little things. And then on the other side, I mean, the defense has been... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed we didn't see it in that preseason game, but it has been every single training camp, and as, as well as against the Bengals in, in their uh, joint practice, the defensive line has been nonstop. I mean, Wooden and Brooks are absolute freaking terrors. Devontae Wyatt has been a madman. TJ Slayton today had a great day. Um, Justin Hollins had a great day today. Lucas Van Ness, it's been since, you know, I mean, his, his last good day was um, the Bengals joint practice. But that entire week from that day prior, it was nonstop Lucas Van Ness. I mean, the pressure is just unrelenting. Then you add in what we've seen from Valentine. That guy is just breaking up every single pass that goes up into the air. I'm seeing Darnell Savage is starting to break up some passes. And obviously, I mean, this is when Jair is not even on the field. So um, it, 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 it's crazy because it, you just see the ceiling and it's like, oh, my goodness. And then you look at the floor and it's like, oh, my goodness. That's... It's really like we're just teetering, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy, but it's 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 exciting and frustrating at the same time because it just feels like it's just sitting there for the taking. We just got to clean up a little bit, and I and I really think this can be, you know, I'm not talking Super Bowl, but considering, like I've said before, half the league gets into the the playoffs, and seventy percent of the league is usually pretty trash. Is it possible we get in? Of course it is. Of course it's possible. So. Let's see if we can just, just again, I, I I don't even care about the ceiling right now. Just clean up the little things so we can be a decent to good team. And then we'll start setting our sights a little bit higher than that. Hey, Pac Daddy, it's uh, Garrett the Mailman. What up? Um, just wanted to give my post-game uh, evaluation of what I saw and um, what I think going forward is going to By the way, sorry to interrupt. I'm just, I just clicked back on the, the stream and I see that there's a bunch of connection issues so i'm hoping that wasn't too big of an issue but if it was i uh, apologize for that and uh, you missed the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life i just said it and you missed it and i apologize it happened uh first off valentine uh has won over the hearts of packer fans coaches and players and i believe he's going to break the hearts of any quarterback that tries to challenge <laughs> him downfield number two before we get there um you know he had a great day, but you never really know. I mean, he's been pretty good through training camp. He had the best preseason that you could ever ask anyone to have. But then it's kind of like, okay, but is that is that it for you? And then he ends training camp today with a pick six on Jordan Love. So he is continuing to go out there and just tear stuff up. Um, what else? He had a, a pass breakup on top of that against DeBose today. A note, Valentine all over DeBose. Uh, what else? Oh, he was running with the ones today for part of today. So he did have, uh, he gave up one pass to the bows today. Otherwise it was great coverage, a pass breakup and a pick six. So he is just already people are talking about how do we put him on the, fi I mean, not just on the 53, how do we make him a starting corner? And I'm going to give you your answer. It's pretty straightforward, even though you're not going to like it, it's going to be Razul in the slot. That's the answer to the question. 
Um, our tight end group has got a long, long row to hoe. Um, Careful. Musgrave looks good. Kraft has definitely got a lot to learn. Um, losing Tyler Davis is really, really going to hurt them. And it's very unfortunate that the timing of Mercedes Lewis going to the Bears just a week ago, that that really sucks. Yeah, that's a good that point. really sucks. Um, next, um, the running backs ran really strong. Mm-hmm. A.J. Dillon finally looked like A.J. Dillon. That was impressive. And I, I can't say enough about uh, the guy they just signed. Uh, man, he looked fast. I'm uh, hoping that uh, Goodson is okay, but uh, I think um, running back group is looking pretty strong. Um, finally, with uh, wide receivers, man, those guys showed out. Reed did exactly what we thought he could do, going up and high-pointing the ball, making plays, um, showing out to be really tough, not afraid to go over the middle. Uh, I just wish he would have pulled in that one pass for a touchdown, but uh, – he has the it factor. Um, Wicks really showed out also. He looked really impressive. Um, Dobbs did what Dobbs usually does, and that's uh, come down with the key play when we need him to. Um, and what can you say just overall? I think I'm more excited about the wide receiver group than any other group in the entire team. I am looking forward to seeing what kind of big plays these guys can make this year. So I'm out. Yeah, I, w- I would maybe lean defensive line, but if you add in the tight ends, specifically Luke Musgrave, that's a tough competition, man. I mean, I, I j- just if, if things continue the way they are, I would almost be surprised if Musgrave doesn't lead the, lead, lead the team in receptions. Um, I mean, Watson, Watson, I think, is the best receiver we have on the team, but I don't see the chemistry there with Jordan Love. It's not really, you know, he's struggling with the deep balls, and there's, there's some short passes, but I mean, if Christian Watson's going to be the guy that you throw to on a quick out uh we're we're we're, we're not exactly in uh prime christian watson territory there romeo dobbs would make the most sense but man luke musgrave again first of all always open which is staggering and um a lot of big plays especially over the middle and and that seems to be jordan loves bread and butter is matt lafleur is getting guys open down the middle and 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 uh Jordan Love, for the most part, aside from his couple of miscues, is just picking that apart, which I think is fantastic. We know the issues with Aaron Rodgers over the middle. I don't exactly understand that whole situation. Um, maybe that has something to do with with guys coming open. You know, I mean, that's Matt Lafleur scheming people open across the middle, but you know, if Aaron's desire is to kind of challenge the boundary, I, I have no idea. But um, I don't know. It's it, it just it it feels different. It feels very different. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how much of that contributes to Jordan Love versus Aaron Rodgers, but it, it just, again, it, it's it's the kind of offense that I think a lot of us have been wanting. And it has nothing to do with like a change of formation or motion or any of that stuff. It's just sort of this quick, efficient, you know, I'm going to look and try to hit that guy that's open across the middle if he's not there. And then I'm going to look over here. And if he's not there, just boom, I'm going to hit this guy in the flat. And it's just, there's always, there just always seems to be an answer. And I don't know if that's a credit to Matt LaFleur. I don't know if that's a, a credit to the intelligence and efficiency of Jordan Love, of just really understanding the offense and going through his progressions, or if it's a, a credit to the receivers that we have. You know, I mean, Aaron Jones has to be able to outrun that linebacker to be open in the flat, to be able to not only catch it, but turn up field um, when the linebacker's in chase. You know, Christian Watson having the speed to win down the field and same with all these other guys, and and if nothing else, if you got a 50-50 ball to Romeo Dobbs, you feel confident throwing it. Um, I don't know, but it's it just so far has been working at, at a high level. Very, very early, but I mean, we saw it in the Eagles game. It just seemed like somebody was always open. Jordan always knew who that person was going to be, and he threw it to him. Again, there's been a couple of bad passes, but um, it's been... Uh, it's been a pretty smooth operation, and that is very, very good to see. I'm, I'm still concerned about, again, the deep passing. I'm concerned about pressure because we haven't really seen any pressure uh, from Philadelphia or this past game. There was zero. How is he going to operate with that? And then, again, just those those miscues, especially early on, um, you know, because eventually those are, again, going to turn into 
interceptions. So that has me a little bit concerned. Why don't we take a quick break? And uh, we'll come back and see what Jeff from, it says Minneapolis, we'll go with Minneapolis, has to say. Hey, Ryan. Jeff. Howdy. Calling in. Thanks for all you're doing. Appreciate it. Great to get the information, the tweets and so forth. Yeah, thanks for calling. Um, regarding the game, I, I thought Jordan Love looked pretty promising. I mean, obviously he, he missed a uh, couple balls there, but. That's part of what we've been seeing, as you alluded to. Uh, people are getting a little too excited on Sean Clifford, I think. I'm excited that he could be a, maybe a serviceable backup at this point, but yeah. I think we need to take it a little easy with him. And again, I'm getting too excited about him, but but not excited about him potentially being a starter. I'm, I'm just excited about the way he plays. I like his mentality. I like his toughness. I like his grit. I like his attitude. I like his ability. I like his rushing ability, his throwing ability, his courage. All that stuff is fun. It's fun. But it's not going to be fun anymore if this is the regular season. That's all I'm going to say. My reason for my call, though, is Josh Myers. Um, okay. My goodness. I don't know how this guy has gone from a serviceable center to not even knowing how to play the position. Like, he's digressing. And it's causing issues for our offensive line, unfortunately. I mean, it's looking more and more like Tom is going to have to take that position over, and then Nyman's going to have to start at right tackle, which I don't want. If I'm Tom's agent, I wouldn't want that. I'd want him as a right tackle right. Uh, for contractual reasons down the road. I'm sure Tom wants to play right tackle for those reasons as well, but I don't know. I just want to hear your thoughts on that. It looks like we got an issue now with our offensive line, unfortunately. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. I think Josh Myers is going to be the starting center for us, and I think Zach Tom's going to be the right tackle, despite the issues. Um, I mean, we haven't even really seen a lot of Zach Tom at center. And um, shockingly, I mean, it's crazy. We've seen, I think, botched snaps from Myers, Hanson, Empey, and maybe Schneider, all different all different centers. Um, you know, part of it could actually be on maybe the quarterbacks, at least some of the time. I don't really know. But... Um, there's definitely something very weird going on with continual, you know, snaps hitting the ground. I mean, it's just, it's, it's the, the, I don't want to say it's easy because I haven't played center, but I've never seen this as like a serious issue. Like even, even look at the draft. How many times have you seen this guy is a future all pro, but his one weakness is snapping the freaking ball. Yeah. He's, he's a great center. It's just the whole snapping the ball thing, man. He, he, uh, struggles there and that doesn't it's not a thing so <clears throat> yeah i don't know i don't know exactly what the answer is i i personally i refuse <laughs> it's not up to me but i refuse to move zach tom off a of right tackle um if we had a better right tackle option i would do it but i i genuinely and and listen rasheed walker is getting a legit look I don't think he's going to be able to make a strong enough push in the limited amount of time that we have. He will make the 53. I'm quite positive of that. So this could even be a mid-season thing. I mean, if, if Josh Myers puts one on the ground in week one against the Bears and we lose, we could see Zach Tom at center, Rasheed Walker, or Josh Nyman taking over at right tackle or something to that effect. <clears throat> but honestly, that's my biggest thing. I mean, as much as I would like to see if Zach Tom could be a legit top-end starter at tackle because that's so unbelievably valuable, um, you know, if Rashid can be that guy, which again I I find unlikely. I think he was a seventh round pick, and um, you know, I, I don't I don't imagine he's going to be too much better than what we would get from Yash Nyman. But the, but again, they're going to give him a legitimate chance to to see if that can be the case, and if need be, if 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 he can do it, and if Zach Tom can be a better version at center, then fine. But the other issue is that Zach Tom, or excuse me, Josh Myers is not a bad center. Run blocking, sure. Zach Tom probably will be pretty rough and run blocking as well, if I had to guess. But I mean, he is he is a and he did it again in the preseason game. I mean, the run blocking didn't grade out very well, but the uh the pass blocking was right back on track. It's 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 in the 70s, like always. So I mean, he is a legitimately good pass blocking center. You know, again, the biggest frustration I have with all this is I'm perfectly content with the offensive line as it is. We have five guys that are really good pass blockers across the line. Some of them are pretty bad to mediocre to maybe okay run blockers, but I don't care. We have a great offensive line with five guys that are going to keep Jordan Love safe. 
and Josh Myers is going to freaking ruin that because he can't snap the ball. I'm going to lose my mind. Figure it out, dude. Uh, Yeah, so that's my stance. Please figure it out because I, I just, again, it's not up to me, but I'm going to pretend it's up to me and I'm just, I'm just going to flat out refuse. I am not moving Zach Tom to center. I'm not doing it. That's stupid. We're not, we're not making accommodations for this. Fix it. Stop being stupid and just snap the ball correctly. Ryan, Kyle from Madison, so, how are you, buddy? Leia. So we finally got that preseason game here. What an interesting game. And I don't think I've ever said that in my whole life about a preseason game. Mm-hmm. But, uh, wow, actually it was quite intriguing. And um, I don't know whether they'll be good or not, but Gutekunst has put together – a heck of a physical specimen in this iteration of the Green Bay Packers. I can tell you that. I mean, fair I want to a man out there. The top two thirds of the preseason roster is more athletic than the other guys on the other side of the ball. In my eyes, I know they kept yeah. talking about how much faster they thought the guys were. Well, it, you know what else is crazy? I'd mentioned that um, I kind of took for granted how how well this team performed until I watched the Bears game and I saw how how bad the Titans were. And it was like, well, that's kind of more what you expect from a Titans game or from a from a preseason game. And so I should really just be appreciative of, of what a great job the Packers did. Maybe I'm alone in this, but did you notice how slow the Titans were? I didn't watch all the other teams, but man, I'm watching their linebacker try to get to the sideline. It's like, what are you doing? Who is that? Is that a defensive tackle playing linebacker? I don't think I've really, because it's been a slow process, right? We went out and we got like Jair and he he runs like, I don't know, four, four or four, three, nine, or like high fourth or something like that. And it's like, this is the fastest guy in the universe. Then we draft everybody that's faster than him. We got linebackers that can fly. We got corners that can fly. Savage can fly. We got defensive tackles like Wyatt that are as fast as half the league's linebackers. <clears throat> and so when I watched, yeah, like I said, that, that Titans game, it's like, I feel like I'm watching this in slow motion. These guys cannot move. So you're right. I mean, th- th- we have built a team. It's funny because I, I, the I think it was Ron Wolf maybe had um, originally kind of come from that Raiders tree. I think it was Wolf. I could be wrong about that, but we kind of we kind of developed into that. And I don't think the Packers took that on, but but the old um, what was his name Al Davis. It was all about just draft the fastest guys you can find you can possibly get, and it was a disaster of a strategy. I mean, it was just a complete failure. He would just go get the fastest guys, and then the team would suck. But we've kind of done that to some degree and had a relatively high degree of success. Um, we'll see what Stokes can do when he comes back, but it, it is something to see these guys. And, and on one hand, it's kind of stupid, but on the other hand, you know, I mean, you just just take Green Bay out of the equation and look at Miami. They're, they're an imposing team just by virtue of how fast they are. Like, as a defensive coordinator, you look at those two wide receivers and go... I, I agree. Uh, pushing buttons. Thank you for, for agreeing with me, Kyle. Um, I mean, it just it creates <laughs> problems. Whatever, just go. This is a joke. They certainly looked the part. Um, Van Ness, I, you know, I thought he did a lot of positive things. I think I set him up in my own expectations. I think anything short yeah, of a I Mortal Combat finishing move, <laughs> yes, I probably would have been disappointed because of what I had. I did the same too, thing. And I think he can still be a great player. Um, Love. I was really happy to see that drive, that that uh, second drive, finish things off, get him out of the game on a positive. Um, very happy about that. And what can you say? Well, I'm sure every caller is talking about Valentine. I yeah. mean, that was about as dominant of a preseason game as you can have, I think. Um, I mean, I, did he win the job? Uh, I, you know, I say, yeah, one of them. Uh, the other thing, I mean, I'm sure there's idiots out there saying Clifford's going to be a starter and all that. But uh, I was really happy with, with Clifford, and he's got enough intangibles as well. I mean, for a backup quarterback, right, I, the way I look at it is, like, if you lose love for the whole season, you, you don't want to be good anyway because you're starting over. Right. It's when we need exactly. you for like the three games, you know, keep us in the hunt. So what I wanted to see out of Clifford 
was, can you go one and two, right? Yeah. Like, do you that. have enough where you can go out there and win one and three? Because it seems like that's usually at a minimum what you need. I think the Eagles were doing that with Minshew last year, and I don't even think he could do one and four just to, just to lock up that division. So <clears throat> can you win one and three? You know, go one and two over three games. That's what I think is really what we need him for. So if something happens to love, he can get in there and keep us in the hunt. And I thought he looked good. Overall, the team the team was, wow. I, I, they had, eyebrow razor. They looked good. Talk to you later. Yeah, I mean, I, again, we're, we're, we're on similar topics here, and I'm repeating myself. But, um, no, I'm, I'm overall content. Uh, I definitely agree with the Luke's Van Ness thing. I mean, he he had been doing such a good job for, for like I said, for about a week straight that I had I had built this thing up in my head, and I still think he's going to be very good. I I, I don't think he's going to have a massive fall from grace here. In fact, I'm hoping he can kind of tear up the Patriots a little bit. Um, you know, he was he was what it appeared to me was he was trying to do too much in that Bengals game. Like, I just wanted to see him run right into the chest of the guy and push him straight back into the quarterback, and he's trying to, like, run around him. He's trying to do stunts and spin moves, and it's like, someday, hopefully, you'll get to that point where you're doing that kind of stuff, but at this point in your career, you got one move, and you're real good at it, and you should just use it and see if you can just knock that tackle straight on his back and go get the quarterback, because that would be freaking cool. Just do it once out of, like, you know, the 15 tries you're going to get, so... Yeah, I mean, overall, there is a lot lot to love about this team. And um, if we can just work out a couple of the kinks and get some of the little stuff figured out, then um, I think we'll have something pretty exciting. Hey, man, it's Jimmy. What's up, um, Jimmy? First of all, I'm excited about the potential of this live call-in idea. That sounds like a lot of fun. It'd be fun yeah. to have an actual conversation. Uh, I think that's where this is headed. And if it is, count me in. That'd be super fun. All right. Um, hey, so this is my side. We saw two series for Jordan Love in the first preseason game as the starter of this team. That's what we've seen. It does not matter where he ranks or what his grades are, or what his PFF score is compared. It doesn't matter. You started to hit on it, and then I thought you kind of lost the thread a little bit, and I just started listening, so maybe there's going to be a lot more, but I just want to call him while it's fresh. It's process. He knows where he's going with the ball. He knows the system, and he's sharp. And, and he's not, like, sharp in terms of accuracy necessarily in every pass, but first season game, man, there's so much more to go. Like, we can't judge anything. Until- I get that, and everybody keeps saying that, but we've had, like, what, 10, 15 practices, and we're also running out of time. So... You know, we can say like, well, it's just one game. Just it's one game. It's one missed pass. Well, no, it's not. It's it's been every single day for a month now, and we got games coming up pretty quickly. So, again, I'm not I'm not sitting here just trying to overreact, but I am reacting to the underreactions, which seem to be like it doesn't matter. It of course it matters. It absolutely matters. You know, I mean. It, Good quarterbacks tend to do more good things than bad things. Bad quarterbacks tend to do more bad things than good things. And and at this point, Jordan Love has has created such a pattern, it's hard to not look at it and say, we, we kind of have a good idea of what he is. And some of it is good and some of it is bad. And so I don't want to just look at it and say, well, you know, the good is 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 great and the bad doesn't count because it's training camp. <laughs> I don't know. It counts to me a little bit. You know, I mean, if we were talking about, you know, some dangerous throws, throwing late across the middle, getting picked off. Okay, fine. It's a learning thing. There's nothing to learn by throwing it 10 feet over a receiver's head. Right? That's not a training camp learning thing. That's something that should have been ironed out, you know, I don't know, in high school. <laughs> so, yeah, I I don't know. I I get that most people are not on the same page with me on this, but... I don't have the expectation this is going to get fixed in three weeks or changed. I think this is going to be what it is. And that's, you just kind of hope that, you know, we haven't seen long periods of time. Like, is it just going to be those first couple of plays and then he gets into a rhythm and we're good for three quarters? Or is it, I don't know. But like I said, I've, I've just been hoping that things start to tighten up over time and I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing any 
getting better. It's just sort of the same thing every single time, which again, when you have this many weeks of seeing the exact same picture, it's hard to look at it and say it's probably going to be something other than the picture. No, it's it's the same it's the same picture every time. So I think I think we got it. I think we know what it is. It's not to say it can't improve, but again, I don't think it's going to improve in the next couple of weeks when, you know, week 1 rolls around, which is in what um like a month maybe, something like that, very soon. We even see a full game. And I know you keep saying like, well, there's this milestone and that milestone and that milestone, but seriously, we can't extrapolate anything from two series. Um, we just can't. Although, that said, I do like to think that, I mean, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, backup. Backup was great, and He was great. And, uh, and, and, and I'm not saying that in like a controversial way. I'm saying he was running the same system that Jordan loves running, right? And he was real smart. He's picking it up quick and he was making the right choices. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love is also making the right choices. He's much more of, you know, I'm blanking on his name, but the backup. And, uh, and what I'm saying is, it seems to me like the system is working and like this mm -hmm. team is buying into the system. And if Jordan Love is confidence and buys into the system. We're solid, man. We're solid. And that's all we need. And it looks like he's getting, he's getting that way. That, that no look pass. That's a perfect learning moment. That's a perfect thing to have on film in the first preseason game. I would almost rather that happens now so that he sees that he doesn't have to take those chances and put in jeopardy what could be a big game for something. You know, it's just an unnecessary risk and he'll see it exactly there. And he's not going to want to keep missing out on that every time. So I think he'll learn from that. He's a smart kid. So, uh, yeah, that's all. Let's just, uh, you know, Keep our keep our seats underneath us here, you know. Uh, let's let's rise up off our seats a little bit because uh, some good stuff's happening. Um, but you know, so we'll sit back down, and wait for the next one. Go back up. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't have anything else really to add to what I said before. It's it's not overreacting to one game. It's reacting to fifteen training camp practices so far, and and the exact same thing happened again today as seems to happen every day, which is the first play. Let me, should I, well, it'll take me a while to find it. It's, it's in the notes, but it's way up there. Cause there are a lot of passes today. A lot of, today was a down day for the offense for sure. But, um, you know, I, I, again, we, we can, we can deal with it however we choose to deal with it, but I just, I can't be painted the same picture over and over and over every single day for however long it's been and come away saying, I think it's going to be a different picture in a couple of weeks. Maybe, but I don't really have any, I have nothing to base that in. You know what I mean? And, and that's kind of back to what I said, I think last time we did this, where I was talking about how it's, you know, Bears fans only case for Jordan Love seems to be that everything around him was bad. And it's like, well, that doesn't make it good. You can't just say, well, his offensive line of wide receivers are bad. Well, how does that make you good? If I was the quarterback with a bad offensive line and bad quarterbacks and made, you know, wasn't able to move the offense down the field, would you say I'm a great quarterback because I have a bad offensive line and bad wide receivers? No. The best you can say is I don't know, but it hasn't been good so far. We it's just we just kind of throw it out at least to some degree. You shouldn't do it 100%, but it's the same thing with this where it's like well, it's training camp, so it doesn't count. Okay, well, I'm st it's still not a positive that it happens every single day. It would be nice to have a positive to at least have something to to sink my teeth into, but it seems like I just keep getting this. And I again, there's a lot of positive. I'm just talking about this one issue, but um, you know, I, again, it's just it's it's a, everybody gets their own interpretation. Mine is that. This is not necessarily going to get fixed. Now, and the other thing, too, is everybody misses passes. But I guess the question just kind of comes down to, like, what does that usually look like? I've been trying to think of how to even find that kind of data, and I don't know if I can find it. Um, I know there are certain things like, you know, Aaron Rodgers missed open receivers. But how often did he do it? I don't know. because because And that's the thing that's going to be annoying is, we're going to end up either losing a game or let's say we're going to end up going three and out on one of these drives because Jordan Love missed a wide open guy. I mean, that's going to happen. And the reaction 
is probably going to be to some degree overreaction to where we're going to pretend that Aaron Rodgers never did that or that Pat Mahomes would never do that or whatever. And those things do happen. I mean, Josh Allen actually is a fairly inaccurate quarterback, despite being a very good quarterback. He just overcomes the inaccuracy through being, you know, this, well, he throws the ball really deep and and um, makes some pretty great plays, especially with his legs to make things happen and has some pretty good weapons around him, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I guess the point is I want to be able to quantify things, right? It's okay to miss receivers. That's true. But what sort of is the, the the standard here of just making flat out mistakes? I don't actually know. I don't have a baseline. I just know that we we seem to be way beyond what the baseline should be. At least that's how it seems to me. Sean Clifford. Sean Clifford. Sean Clifford. Sean Clifford. Mini Favre. Sean Sean Clifford. Uh, smart Favre. Smart Favre. I like that one. Smart Favre. That's that's what he is. Okay, go back home. Fair enough. Nico, what's going on? Hey, Ryan. Uh, this is Nico. Sorry about go. my mountain bike phone call. It's pretty hard to read your notes on your phone right down the road. Try to miss people on a busy street. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to do that again. But hey, you know, so Jimmy, Jimmy just called and made his bold prediction of us winning more Super Bowls with this core. And I know that's kind of you know, high in the sky, but I can tell you, I'm kind of with them because the Packers have always had like a, uh, a spattering of young talent, good veterans. You know, you look at the 96 team, the 2010 team, you had all that. But this will kind of remind me of the 90s Cowboys okay. where they uh, fleeced the Vikings uh, for uh, that train with Herschel Walker. And they got all those picks. Oh, this my cat. Um, they got all those picks, and they were such a good young team. They grew together. I'm on the phone, maybe alone. And that's what this team reminds me of. You got Love, who's been here a couple, of, you know, three, four years to get into this, you know, get the knowledge of how to run the offense. You got Christian Watson, you got Dobbs. You know, this is their second year. Um, I'm going to just go out there and say we got a couple good talented receivers this year, too. And Reed, and at least Musgrave, we'll see what Kraft turns into. We got a good set of, you know, young. Linemen, offensive linemen. Um, I think Jake at the time will be just, a, we're going to look back at some of the best ones we've had. Defensive line, we still got a young Gary. I think Van Ness, uh, Wyatt. I just think we have such a great young core where we could really, for the next, you know, give them a couple of years to grow mature where we could just be like those 90s Cowboys with man, they just plow through everything. Yeah, so nice. uh, I'm gonna also echo his saying it too because uh, I know you always you sometimes dump some calls when you have like an event and everyone calls for. It. About to do that right now, actually. Maybe if you can't say this, I know that uh, I made a few phone calls back then a couple of days ago that I haven't made it yet. And I, let me just say that I don't remember what I said, and I kind of want to know what I said. I made like five or six calls. Dude, and you made you one, two, three, four, five. You made seven calls. Explained it in a slightly integrated way as to why I thought that. Um, and I don't remember what I said, so I kind of want to remember what I said. So, hey, um, if you got to jump them, it's cool, but if you can keep them, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, hey, go pack, go. Really looking forward to next week. Obviously, the no injuries. I really think we got this stuff building and growing. And, yeah, we could be the – we could be the, the – I, I don't want to say the Patriots. Cause that was an anomaly, but the Sunday Cowboys, all the young dudes sitting in that team at the same time, and they have like seven, eight years of just crushing it. And we could, too. Yeah, just doing some quick math. There are 35 calls that I am, as of right now, about to dump just because sometimes that happens. You know, you get a preseason game comes up. I don't want to get a bunch of calls about I'm excited for this game. And uh, my, my prediction is this out of the other. And it's like the game happened yesterday. So I don't need to hear that. So I skip ahead and I've got 12 calls in front of me and calls are just going to keep pouring in. So the 35 that I skipped will be officially dumped. And I apologize for your seven drunk calls. I wish maybe I'll listen to them in private and giggle. I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll see. You can always just get hammered tonight and call back, you know, and then we'll find out together how you're feeling um, when you're inebriated. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. For the YouTube crowd, please subscribe. Please hit the bell notification because when we do go live, you're going to want to be able to see it and interact. And I'll have the chat section sitting there, so that'll be kind of cool. 
So it doesn't necessarily have to be calls. So if there's a question there in the chat, I can get to that as well. And then um, maybe maybe that'll be like dipping the toe in the water. We'll go live. No calls. We'll have the chat section there. Kind of interact with the chat a little bit as we go. Just see how this thing flows while things are live. And then eventually we'll open it up to calls and see kind of how that pans out. Because there's also like a call waiting option. And so I'm going to have people calling and then I got to put them on hold and then like finish my thought if I can and then get to the call. And it's going to be a little bit of juggling. But I think once we get it figured out, it'll be fun. And and again, until Matt Ramage keeps saying he's going to do a call-in show. But until then, this is the only Green Bay Packers call-in show. And um, I'm excited to have some people call in and have some fun, especially during the season as the games go on. I mean, heck, we could even do this during the game sometime. We, we maybe we'll do it uh, this this uh, this upcoming game. We'll see this preseason game against the the uh, Patriots. We'll see if I'm able to do a live stream. Maybe we'll throw the number up there and uh, see if some people want to call in. We'll see. But again, you're not going to know any of that if you don't hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification so that you know when uh, we're going live and we'll have some fun together. But um, anyways, you guys have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye bye.